You are very welcome to the UCD Evolution Garden. My name is Phil Smith and I am the Outreach and Impact Scientist here at UCD Discovery. Now, we've put together a pretty snazzy event for you this evening with help from Intel Ireland, Harp Ireland and UCD Explore. And what UCD Explore does here is it takes kids from all areas around Dublin and brings them into UCD to teach them about science, technology, engineering and maths, STEM. And the idea isn't to turn everybody into a scientist, but to show them and to show you that science can make your life better, more efficient. It's about getting on a little bit better. So what about the snazzy event we have this evening? Well, to help me introduce it, we have Aileen McCran from Harp Ireland. So Aileen, what's happening this evening? So actually, what's happening this evening is that we're having this fantastic voyage of exploration, looking at three totally different harps, one played with the fingernails, one a lever harp played with, with the finger pads, and this beautiful creation from Intel, which is a laser harp. And we've decided we're putting the three of them together to kind of wed three traditions from the thousand year old tradition right through to the present day, marry technology and art, and have three harpers play in totally different ways to celebrate Lawn Akrita Harp Day. So that sounds ambitious. It sounds like there's a lot going in, but also I didn't realize like a thousand years old, like there's a lot going into this. Yes, and actually when we were getting this idea together, what really tickled our fancy, both you and I, mm. was that we had this thousand year old tradition that I was speaking about where the harp was played as nails, where we were looking at this laser harp where you're literally drawing your fingers across yes. and you're getting this response from sound and it struck me well why not bring the lever harp into it as well with the gut strings played by the finger pads. And harping has been internationally recognised. Yes and the really exciting thing about it here is that we actually have three totally different harps but what has been recognised is the art of harping and when you look at, at the way these harps have been played you, you just celebrate the way that the tradition of harping has evolved and you see why that has been recognised on the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage which in fact was awarded to Irish harping in 2019. Which is fabulous and I can think of nothing better than going to listen to Cormac play our laser harp right now. That was uh, impressive. It looked a little bit difficult though. How was it to play? Well, it was different because, you know, there's no uh, kickback, there's no strings to touch. So it's like an air harp with a difference. You know, like, so, so finding it, um, well, it was really hard to get the two hands to, to like, playing a chord at the same time because judging, you can, so you end up, rather than playing, like strings you play this way, you know, you, you can, whereas these, you kind of have to, to sort of dip in and out to get a clear sound and not be crisscrossing the, the, the differences. It took a while to get the, the kind of action going. But then to judge that with the two hands at the same time and find it, I couldn't work, it just wasn't happening. So, because uh, it's, it's just the, I guess the distance apart and the, it's the scale, it's not, it's not, the strings are spaced differently or the other, the, the beams of light. <laughs> yes. So, uh, those <laughs> lasers. So, I just thought, so focus on one hand is the, the way to do it. So, do you know what? Don't, don't try this, like, just do. But what I liked about what was handy is you can play chords and you can play ornaments and you can play just like just as you would if you, as long as you can find them in the right place so it was just a question of sort of going from this to, to sort of that so there's an adjustment to playing yes. something like yes. this yeah. so not being able to see the strings but also the spacing of them is a little bit different yeah. the tune though sounded familiar well it was Dilly No Doubt so it's, you know, it's like my grandmother's had a TV show in the 80s I was the same we were the kids Claim on that fame. Her, with her harp lovely and I thought why not uh, I said, also it's a pentatonic tune it's one of those tunes that you can actually uh, play all the strings on the all, all the notes that you need for that tune are there, bar one little passing note you can, which we left out. <laughs> but um, it was just fun to try and work out a tune that had to that you had to kind of you know uh, aim. And the, 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 I had the guy the, the red light at the bottom. You could find your way a little bit, but it was it was uh, it was a bit of a challenge. But I, it took a, took a while. But I got into it, and it's, it's actually fun when you get when you get the. Oh, that's what I was and, just going to ask. Yeah. Is the fun? Is the playing with it with something a bit different? Is is there expl exploration a bit of crack? It is very much so. And actually, the ornaments are easier to play in the in the air than they are to try and find a string. So they they were lighter, lighter the, the zero touch, the lighter touch, <laughs> but they're not. Um, I guess. To try the thing, next step would be to have the full, the full scale, the full, you know, the the uh, the eight notes that we have, and if you have a, 
uh, you know, eight notes of can I find them all? It's, it's easier to, you, you can't miss, you can't go wrong if you know where you're going at this one. You have, you have sort of the path is there, whereas with, with more, more, more beams comes more potential disaster. You know? Potential so, for disaster, for potential for success. Absolutely. But that's where absolutely. everywhere in art yeah, and science ends up in the end. That's the thing, you know. Oh, I love it. And this, the potential is there for far more. So I really, it was, it was very enjoyable. I'm glad I, I'm glad I got to master at least one tune, you know. The, the risk reward of adding even more lasers and obviously as science and art there's always that little bit more, that next step to go. There is and rather than the levers I'd have a little flick on the system and you could press it up, reprogram it, tune it different keys. I, that'd be my first thing is to, to actually be able to on board somewhere just be able to change the keys and then I'd be have lots more exploring to do then. You know. uh, that's it, we never stop. Now to find out why such an interesting and cool apparatus exists, I went out earlier in the week to talk to Eamon Sinnott, who's the general manager of Intel Ireland, and I asked him, why are Intel involved in such a project like this? I believe that science and the arts are inextricably linked. They seek to understand the world around us and to imagine future possibilities. When science and the arts collide, the energy present at that collision can lead to new and beautiful realities. As a symbol of that collision, in collaboration with UCD Explore, we are very proud to support the creation of a laser-strung harp and a corresponding education programme tailor-made for primary school students. The laser harp we have commissioned, made by artist Thomas Freer, is beautifully crafted from cedar and is played when the musician's hands intersect the laser beams. I love it because to me it's a celebration of Ireland's achievements in science and the arts built right into our national emblem. And so to mark Lawna Critcha Harp Day, it is my pleasure that the laser harp will be played by the internationally renowned and exceptionally talented harper Cormac Debarra. <laughs> fantastic it was really lovely to hear I have to say I wasn't expecting it to sound so in sync it was just beautiful that was a lot of fun yeah, it was actually, I yeah. think I, I take my hat off to Cormac for dealing with this harp with no strings so it, the difficulty. I love it it's a, it's a great invention you know it's wonderful it's a, it's a new a new departure anyway for sure I think the, the really interesting thing for me is that interface where technology and art come together you know, this is a thing we're going to see more of. I already work with lasers on harps, but not as strings. I'm busy doing 3D laser scans of old harps of the National Museum uh, so that we can build them. And now you see laser in another context entirely being the harp, being part of the harp. So it's a really, it's a really interesting departure, I think. So I mean, the advantage, I mean, just throw it in the fact that you work with lasers, fantastic. You could work here necessarily. Well, I'd be <laughs> delighted because it's something that's very close to my heart is where we, you know, where these interfaces happen. Inter so, yeah. Uh, well, it's, and I mean, like you, even that movement there are fine things you have a fine instrument Rachel beside you lots of levers on yours how is yours different necessarily to the other harps um, so 
that's exactly it. We have 34 strings and each has its own lever, which allows us to raise a pit, the pitch, a semitone um, on each string. And I suppose, yeah, just quite a big range as well on the harp. And is, what, is there an advantage to playing yours as opposed to the laser harp or is there something that's, that's very um, different? I suppose you can move between the keys quite easily, easily which is quite nice. Um, but we do have a lot of tuning, which you don't have to deal with on the laser harp. As <laughs> yes, Cormac yeah, yeah, yeah. smiles. I was like, yeah. <laughs> the first time I was coming here at the harp in the back of the car and I was halfway here and I just realised, oh God, I have no key. I went, I don't need to tune this thing, I just turn it on. So <laughs> it was Win a difference. that's different. Window that's down different. like a harp yeah, yeah. in the background is good. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Actually, there's yeah. a bit more of a link between the laser harp and my harp because you have a pentatonic scale tuned yeah. on the laser harp. Yeah. And I play a lot of pentatonic music on an old Irish harp because this, is, of course, is the, the Ireland's ancient harp that died out around 1800. And a lot of the music is modal. It's not in sort of major or minor keys like modern music. So I play pentatonic tunes and we can, we can sort of share tunes between yeah. the laser harp and the old harp. So it's like a kind of pairing up, Rachel, I mean, like you were part of the whole ensemble here. How did you feel performing with the other Brilliant. instruments? I think it was really interesting to hear all the different timbres and how they can work together was quite nice and just exploring different things. I think it's lovely. And I think that's quite, you know, you've hit the nail on the head there with this exploring idea in terms of like, and this is an exploration. Is this the evolution of, of harps going forward, uh, Siobhan? Uh, well, well, of course, I always have difficulty with, with the word evolution because okay. that implies a sort of slow, gradual change. Sure. And moving from less sophisticated to more sophisticated. So um, I suppose these harps didn't evolve one from the other. They're sort of temporarily spaced through the centuries. This is the old one that uh, I we had uh, had it for about 800 years at least dies out in 1800 and then just as the um the ancestor of rachel's harp uh, comes into being in dublin um so that's you know an irish instrument that's um that's invented here in ireland and of course now now we have this but they're not so they're not particularly linked to each other but we see them all in their different temporal spaces and now we get a chance to sort of explore and experiment with and them she, together and, and the link that we found with this pick of the tune we chose molly it's the tune for that harp was so uh, but it sits it was the first thing when all of us heard which i would try this harp the first time the first tune was our molly one because it would it just it's a, that, that's the scale is right the the the, the, the notes, you know, I can't change key in the sample. I'm sure you can, but you could pro reprogram it, I'm sure. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I have no key for that. So, so it, was just, it, just, it just married straight away. We think we just and locked yeah. in pretty, without any great Because uh, Molly Vaughan is the very first tune that the 18th century harpers taught their students. That was the first didactic tune. So isn't that lovely that we take an ancient Irish harp tune and then it goes straight through the lever harp and then onto the laser harp. I mean, what a perfect place to start. It's always like tradition, science, art are, are meeting together as well. And a perfect, as just as Siobhan, Cormac and Rachel came together to play something beautiful for us this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. You're so us. welcome. Thank, Thank you very much for having us. Thank you so much for joining us here at the UCD Evolution Garden and on behalf of UCD Explore, it's been our pleasure having you. Uh, I've been enthralled with the three harps that we've had and it's been wonderful hearing the three of them performing together. And a massive thank you to Intel, in fact, who made this laser harp for UCD Explore and who gave us this opportunity to trace the evolution of harping from a thousand years right through to the present day. For more information on Lana Kritha Harp Day, go to harpisland.ie and for other information, keep an eye on Intel's website, on UCD Explorer's website and anywhere you see scientists playing laser harps. There's bound to be one somewhere. There's one right here. See you next time.